what's up guys Julian here and today I'm back and I'm going to be showing you how to make a full hard melodic techno track now as usual you can get the full project files samples MIDI presets everything from this track that you just heard in the intro as well as the full entire arrangement project file is available right at the top of the description on my website go grab this it really helps support me you know this project has a bunch of new stuff that I've never shown you guys before and it sounds cleaner than I've ever gotten it in this style, to be honest. So, go grab that. Don't miss out. Get it while it's still there. Link is at the top of the description. Thank you so much for the support, guys. I really don't make a whole lot off of YouTube, especially for all the work that I'm putting in. But with these templates and sample packs, I'm able to keep bringing you guys new videos every single day and teaching you stuff that's not out there. Thank you so much for the support. Link is at the top of the description. And let's dive in. So. Let's start with, we're at 144 BPM, you know, a bit faster, but it's a really nice groove. And we got the kick. So this kick, we got a new kick sample I made. And you can see, no processing, so right off the bat, again with the kick, like, you know, I think a lot of people think you got to go and do a bunch of over-processing. I've definitely been guilty of that in the past, giving you guys some information that maybe wouldn't translate as well. But yeah, like, you really just want to get a nice, fat kick sample and not really over-process it. Really, if you're doing processing on the kick, what you should do is you should have a session where you make, like, four or five kicks and then just, like, stick to those. And when you make them... You know, reference them with other tracks, make sure that it's hitting as hard as those tracks, all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, like, you really don't need to be doing too much processing. Like this, for example. You know, it's got everything. It's got the lows. It's got the click, too. Like, the, like a lot of times, you know, when people oversaturate their kicks or compress it, it's because they're trying to get that, like, click to come out. But it's like, dude, you can take a kick that doesn't have that and try to saturate it all day and turn up the transient knob on drum bus, or just get a sample like this that has that click to it. Now, in this case, this is one where I had a low-end kick, like a kick that had a very nice low-end, and then I just added the highs from a kick that had some good highs. And it's just going to be infinitely more powerful than if you just sat there with a kick that was just not it and tried to oversaturate it. We have the bass as well, which is made with a tom. So what's happening? The bass is playing the same MIDI as the kick. And then we have this tom sample here. And then what's happening is it's an arpeggiator doing 16th notes. So that's how you get that nice deep rumble. And this one's a bit different because, you know, usually with these, you're going to filter it, you know, make it pretty low. But obviously, this one has the low end, but we actually left the high end open. You can see there's no low pass or anything. And what that does is you're still getting the low end. Because if you were to low pass this, it's the same exact thing, right? Like, that's all still there if you were going to do that normal rumble kind of thing. It's just we're also now including the highs. And it adds a lot of texture, too. Right? Like, it's kind of like its own percussion loop. If we play this with the drums... You know, that's a nice group. But that tom really, like, fits in there. Because it's adding this nice, like, industrial kind of percussion thing. But also, again, it's the bass. Now, with this one, it's just going through a little bit of drum bus. You can see, yeah, drum bus is actually good for these. You know, because, like, this, you're not as concerned with, like, really preserving that original sound. Now, that being said, don't mess it up with the drum bus. Because that's very easy to do, too. You can see we're not using that much drum bus. But the little bit that we're using, with that crunch... And with some, a little bit of the transient knob to bring out the clickiness. And then the boom. I have it tuned, you can see, to F. Because that's the key we're in, F minor. And yeah, the boom is going to be important. Because if you're adding the saturation, it might take away some low end. So that can just make it, like, really fat. And again, like, this is a sound that's more about sound design than, like, you know, perfectly preserving this original sample. But also, you don't even really need this. Like, you could... You could also do that if you want. It's really just like what you're feeling. So, after that, it's just being side chained to the main kick. And then I have this EQ, which cuts out some of the low end. This isn't stuff that you hear. We can't really hear at this frequency range. But by cutting it out, 
You know, that's still, if you left that in, that's still going to get in the way when you're mastering and, you know, you're compressing and limiting the track. And really with, like, if you do some saturation on the master, too. So, by cutting that out, it's not something that you're going to miss, but it is going to allow you to have a lot more headroom for mastering. So then on the group here, we just have a high pass, which comes in really just at the intro and outro to bring this in. And then this EQ, which is doing another one of those low end cuts I was just talking about. And yeah, so then we have the bass. So yeah, this is obviously like a bass, you know, it's called the bass. It's not like the low end bass though. The very careful balance you need to strike here is you're going to have your normal rumble kick and you pretty much always want to have that. You could do like this bass that we're showing and have that be the low end. But really, I think what's best is just have your just like aggressive, hard hitting rumble kick that like, you know, if you take away all this melodic stuff, you know, it's just like a nice hard techno track, right? You know, it's about having this groove and then making this bass still fit on top of that so you have it playing that progression. But the real bass bass is coming from that tom. And really, it's not that hard to do, right? So I'll show you the MIDI. You know, this is a pretty standard thing in F minor. And we're talking musically here, like music theory. It's the root note, the fourth, the sixth, and the fifth. This... Those intervals, like the root note, the fifth, and the sixth, are everything with this style. You, know, you get a lot of tension when you go. Right? Like, it's kind of like this tension. And then it releases when you get down to there. And then it resolves really nicely on the F. Right? So it's actually very simple. You know, it's only four notes. But there's a lot happening there on a subconscious level. Now, with the sound, like I said, simple sound. Just two saw waves, detuned. Low pass filter with some automation to bring it in and out. A bunch of unison. A little bit of chorus. Some overdrive. It's being sidechained to the kick. And then this is where this all works. You can see we have an EQ8 really cutting out. Not like the fat stuff in the low mid range, but just cutting out that like deep low end that we get in the way of the tom. We also have this. This is just for the break to kind of make this like build in. I have a utility converting the bass to mono. And then the final thing here, and this is also a big part of what makes this work with that kick and bass, is this EQ, which is cutting out at 100. And you can see that only comes on when the kick is playing. That's the secret there, right? It's just something that you don't even really notice. Like, no one, even if I heard your track and you did this, and I've been doing all this audio engineering, and I get how this stuff works, even if I heard that, I still wouldn't know. Like, nobody's going to know, oh, yeah, he's got an EQ8 cutting on right every time the kick plays. It's a really subtle thing, but it makes a big difference because that right there, 100 hertz, is where a lot of what's going to make this clash with the bass and the kick is happening. See, if we turn it off, all of a sudden the low end gets kind of muddy. But then you don't want that here when there's nothing else happening. So simple automation. And yeah. So then we have our lead. So here's the MIDI, yeah, you can see it's playing this. So here we're really playing with that thing I was telling you with the bass. So the, we're only using three notes here, right? We're just using our root note, our fifth, our sixth, and then another root note knocked it up. So we'll count that as just three notes, right? But that's going to work really well with the bass because the bass is also only using those notes. Like if you eliminate the amount of notes and like you have these two different parts playing different patterns with pretty much those same three notes, save for when the bass also uses the fourth there, it's going to be very cohesive. Even if they're playing different things, they're playing the same notes, just different patterns with those notes. And yeah, like, I think that's what can really make this fit together. The other thing is the rhythm, right? It's this dun 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 dun. And then at the end is the same thing, just in reverse. And then here we get this little glide. 
It's a very simple lead, but it's catchy and very melodic. Also, we have this part in the beginning. And a little arrangement tip. So you can see this is the same lead, but I just took out some of the notes so that it would fit. And then when you have, like, two MIDI patterns on one track that are different, see, I always change the color of them so you know. I did the same thing with the bass when it's just playing this one note up here. Because that way, when you're looking at the whole track, you know, you're looking at... You can, like, very easily see the parts where it changes to the different pattern, right? So, then for the sound on this one, this is made with analog. So, it's two saw waves here. With a low-pass filter. You know, just a bit of an LFO, actually moving that around very slightly. But also, we have a lot of automation. So, this is a very dynamic sound. The filter really never sits in the same place in two parts of the track. And that's something that you want to think about. It's like... You know, obviously it's a very simple pattern, it's over and over. You ask yourself, well, why is this track that's so repetitive still staying interesting? That's it. Obviously, you're just playing the same notes over and over, but the parameters on the synth are constantly moving and changing. And that is what is going to keep this exciting. And why, you know, if you just take, like, one loop and copy it over and over, and then try to make that into a track, it's not really going to be, even if it is as repetitive as this is, it's still not going to feel as exciting or dynamic. That's it right there. So then we have the amp envelope like that. We got some vibrato, some unison, and then the glide for that little slide at the end there. I got a bit of reverb. I have my ultimate stereo widening rack, which I have a video about what that's doing on my channel. So go ahead and look that up if you want to know. I've got a drum bus, which you can see is making this a lot fatter, but it's only, it's blended in there. So you're still getting a little bit of the dry signal, so it's not too crunchy. We got a high pass filter, this washout, which is basically just a reverb with a high pass filter. <laughs> make it disappear in the break there we have it being side chained to the kick and then i have this utility and this is a little automation it's just for this part i wanted it to disappear right like not have all the reverb ringing up and normally what i would do is i would just automate this right just like automate that to cut on but see what happens you hear that click Right? It's like really noticeable. And it, you might not even always hear it like when you're at home, but I promise you, if you take this track in the rave or in the club, all of a sudden you're going to get to that really powerful, complex moment, and then it's just going to be like, like it's not, it's going to kind of break the immersion. So, easy way around that, just get a utility and just have it like kind of whoop, taper off like that. So it goes down, but you're not getting that sudden like over top of the sound that's going to take people out of your track. So then we have this pad. And this is really like in relation to the bass. So this you can see is playing this pattern with really not that many notes inside of the scale. It's actually pretty much the same voices as I showed you for the bass line, right? We got our fifth, our sixth, our fourth, a root note, another fifth, another sixth, root note. There's a third, so yeah, another note from the scale, but maybe something you haven't already heard. And then the fifth and sixth. And then it's really just the way that's playing over the bass, because the bass is changing notes at the same time, but it's different notes. So you're getting these chords across two different elements, and that's what creates that sound. Like, if you just play this on its own, it's a little bit... It still works great, but it's about the way this fits together with that bass. And this is made with wavetable. It's a saw wave and a square wave. We got this low pass filter, which you don't really need to worry about. We got a bit of unison. You can see the noise setting is really good for these pads. It gives you that like washed out kind of unison. We have a bit of reverb, which hey, you can also ignore the automation on that. We got a compressor side chaining into the kick. And then finally, just a low pass filter. Just bring it in and out, you know, again, just like the lead, keeping it really dynamic so it's never just the same thing over and over. And then we have this pad arp. So what this is, I wanted a pad here, but I wanted it to kind of stand out because we already have these two playing chords. So if I was to make like a pad, you know, like some kind of chord progression, it would get too crowded. But with this... It's filling in that space, right? It's super atmospheric, you know, it's just this simple saw wave with like a pluck. 
A little bit of echo and reverb, some amp to give it texture. You know, it's very simple, but it still gives you that atmospheric pad, but it's gonna stand out more. And that's also in the rhythm. So for notes, this is pretty straightforward. We're just using our root note, our fourth, our fifth, and our sixth, if you're looking at this musically. But it's this like kind of bouncy pattern with it that makes it. Right, but then you put that through all the reverb and delay and you get this super atmospheric, almost like a pad. And then also there's a low pass filter just bringing that in and out. Again, super dynamic. And yeah, so that is all the synths. It's really not that many. You're really just going to have like three or four in your track, right? These tracks are very simple. So then we have this little rave loop. This is one of mine actually from my Ultimate Rave Loops sample pack. And this is just in the break. It's just building up. Right, we got a low pass filter. We have a bit of a washout on it. And then over here, we have this little transition. So this is something I've heard in a lot of Quan Kunstler tracks. And he's not the only one that does it. A lot of these hard techno producers do this. Where you have this, so it's like building and building with that rave loop, right? Because you don't want to have just the synths here. You need to have some drums. That's keeping the energy. And then it's building and building and building. And then it just reverses. And then it's the tape stop here. And the way we do that, is right on that last corner note there, right? You can see we have an echo. The filter's turned off. I have the time not synced. So when you move this, it's just free moving. And then, yeah, so the dry wet comes up. So you get the echo just in that part. And then it's this automation with the time going down. And that's how you get that. And then we also have that over here. And yeah, so there's a lot of plugins that can do a tape stop. Like, I know there's some free ones, too. But that's how you can just do it with the Ableton stuff. And the thing is, a lot of those free tape stop plugins can mess up. And, like, all of a sudden, like, you know, something's wrong in your project file and you have no idea what's going on. But this is just, like, literally with the Ableton Echo. And it sounds the same. And it's just so much faster and more intuitive. So that's how I do that. Then we have our drums. Right, so when you play this all together, even though this is a very melodic track, this is the foundation of the track, is this hard, powerful, industrial, warehouse groove. You know, all this melodic stuff is going to really fall apart if you don't have this really solid. So when you're making the track, actually you want to start with this stuff, like get your kick good, Get a nice drum groove, and then you can get melodic with it. Even if you come up with the melodic stuff first, put it to the side and get this. Because all that stuff doesn't work unless you have this really solid foundation. And it's not really that complicated either. It's just very powerful sounds. Like we have this really fat hi-hat. Just like the kick. We don't need any processing because the original sample is already very good. We have also it's layered with this. For some high end, again, just a high pass filter on that for processing. We have our ride, which is pretty simple as well. Just a nice classic 909 ride. And then we also have this percussion. So we have this rave loop, again, just one of mine. And we also have this, these rolls underneath it. But you can hear that's what has a lot of that groove that Right, it's that grooving off of the hi-hat and the kick. We also have this effects loop. So this is just some effect samples and I made this little like rhythmic pattern. If you listen to it with the kick, you can hear it's got a nice groove. And it's good because everything else is like and then you just have this one like like kind of more spaced out there. And then on the group, well, actually, for that, so that's just made, it's just distorting these effect samples. It's like this pedal, a bit of reverb, and then an overdrive after that to crunch the reverb and give it more texture. And then this auto pan, which makes it, like, kind of have a quarter note pulse, right? You can see we have the phase on zero, it's just affecting the volume. And then we have a high pass going into it, 
so you're not getting like you know too much in there and then we just have a low pass filter which gives it a bit more of an arrangement we also have a low pass filter on the group of percussion here really just for like some of these like little endings here Other than that, we just have some effects along the bottom. Now, with the effects in this style of track, you're not going to have that many, right? Because really, this style of track needs to be very simple. And if you have too much, like, sweeping and snare builds, you know, it kind of takes away from that, like, warehouse raw kind of element. You do still want some, though. And you'll notice they're mostly happening towards the beginning of the track, right? Like, in the beginning, when you don't have all this melodic stuff happening, that's a great time because you have this drum groove, and it, that's really repetitive. So to have like a little effect sound come in over that. Right, like it's just gonna give you something a bit more exciting. So that's where you wanna have a lot of it and then it tapers off towards the middle and then comes back a bit more toward the end. But in the middle you just need a few little things like in the break here for example. Just having that there is like a very tiny thing. It's very easy to do. But it's just going to make this a little bit more interesting because throughout here, you're just getting the same thing over and over. So to have that one little is really going to keep the arrangement exciting and carry it along. And yeah, so. That's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get this full template mixed, mastered, ready to go. You can literally just drop this as your own track. Now, people might call you out, but go ahead. Literally, you have all free reigns to do this. Link is at the top of the description. Again, it really helps support me, guys. If you enjoyed this video and you want to take your tracks to the next level, go grab this. I promise you, your next techno track is going to sound really solid if you use this or if you get it to learn from. Maybe you just need some new inspiration. Whatever you're looking for, I promise you, this has the answers for it for your production. Link is at the top of the description. And thank you so much for the support, guys. I really appreciate it. Every little bit helps. And I will see you tomorrow with another video.